In a relatively short time, the Netherlands has become a European Valhalla for retro enthusiasts. In 2015, the Bonami Game and Computer Museum reopened in a huge location in Zwolle. Then in 2017, the National Video Game Museum opened in Zoetermeer. And from March this year, we have the Home Computer Museum in Helmond. I haven't visited any of these locations before, but when a Just Jackrabbit event was announced in the National Video Game Museum, I just had to go. You see, Just Jackrabbit was pretty huge in my childhood. The first game was released in 1994 and back then I was a bit young, but I loved it to bits. The arcadey feel and cartoony characters weren't very common on PC games and when the second game arrived in 1998 I was obsessed. Just Jackrabbit 2 offered limitless level creation tools and online multiplayer capabilities that would keep me hooked for years. Even to this day, the game has a stable fan base, still putting out new levels and tile sets. And with the recent release on the GOG platform, for the first time in almost 20 years, people can actually buy the game again. Better late than never, I guess. Both games were released by Epic Games or Epic Mega Games at the time, because in the 90s, everything cool was either Turbo, Ultra or Mega. And while Cliff Benzinski was the creative mastermind, most of the programming was done in the Netherlands by Dutch developer Arjan Brusse, who is currently more famous for the Killzone series. Needless to say, this green hair or rabbit, which might be a hidden gem abroad, has an important place in Dutch PC gaming history. The Jazz Jackrabbit exhibition and event was organized by PC King Anna Brasch, owner of world's largest big box PC game collection. The National Video Game Museum started out as a hobby and is now one of the most impressive arcade experiences you will find in the Netherlands, with over 1000 square meters filled with cabinets, consoles and gaming artifacts. The first part of the museum displays a timeline of PC and console based gaming. Look at this awesome 70s and 80s room, this is like the perfect man cave for that era of gaming. You can check out a Vectrex and an Atari 2600 here. The next part shows some of the next generations like the NES, SNES and Mega Drive systems, along with some arcade cabinets, most notably the Sega Megatech system in the center, which plays custom Mega Drive and Master System cards. On the side here is a nostalgic 90s display, starting with console games including the horrible Zelda CGI games and various handhelds and flippos, which were collectible picture discs found in crisps that Dutch 90s kids were crazy about, followed by some of the more obscure systems. The next part shows a late 90s room with a PlayStation N64 and a display of the Jazz Jackrabbit collection. I really like how they decorated the rooms to fit the time frames. The Jazz collection consists of a full set of the first two games, including the holiday extensions as well as some memorabilia items that were only produced for the game's release. And wow, I had that PC Zone agenda back in high school. You really have to see this in person if you're a fan. Next are some more interesting arcade machines, followed by playable kiosks for the Dreamcast and GameCube, before you get to the awesome arcade hall. And this really is the highlight of the museum. They seem to have it all. Japanese rhythm arcades, racers, shooters, classic games like Metal Slug, Operation Wolf and many light gun cabinets. There are plenty of games here to keep you busy for hours. In the back of the hall is another display showing Anna's Dutch portion of his big box collection, including games from Davilex like the Red Cat Edutainment series and Amsterdam, as well as various games from other Dutch studios. And here is a section of Guerrilla and Lost Boys games, followed by some more modern games from indie developers. The Just Jackrabbit event was topped off with an impressive speedrun of Just Jackrabbit 1 by record holder Simon, as well as a live performance of Floppy Ears and the Big Guns, which performed some of the neat tracks by Robert Allen and Alexander Brandon live. The Just Jackrabbit exhibition will be around until the end of April. The games Just Jackrabbit and Just Jackrabbit 2 are currently available at GOG.com. If you're coming, you'll notice that the city of Sutomir itself isn't much to look at, but it does have this awesome graffiti building. You can get there by train or use the light rail that connects The Hague with Rotterdam. It has a stop in the middle of the mall where the museum is located. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers.